everybody welcome to another model building workshop today we're going to look at this aircraft here this is the nakajima ki-44 shoki or known as the tojo by the allies this is a japanese army fighter interceptor plane and this version here was put out by ARI or A R I I, but it's probably well. It, it's the same kit that Otaki put out back in around 1974. So this mold has been through a number of different uh, manufacturers that kind of reused the same mold over and over. So it's been sitting. Uh, the molds have been around since apparently 1974. Because I'm reading an article here that talks about it, and has the original otaki box art which if i'm not mistaken it's been a while since i built this i think they reused the same box art and just put the ari label on it um you get some idea from from this picture here what the molding looks like but i'm going to show you on another otaki slash ari kit what the molding and everything looks like so these are from the 1970s and this is before um, companies like Hazagawa and Tamiya really ramped up their game and got all these different aircraft out there. So so it's got the shape of the plane down pretty well. But some of the details, it's not, it's not the same quality basically as a Tamiya or has a Gawa kit would be. Some things are a little bit simplified, a little rudimentary, you know, like the uh, elevator flaps here and the rudder. They're just in one locked position. You can't uh, change the positions of them unless you are really handy with a knife. Um, the pilot figure, which I don't know if you can see in there, it's kind of basic. The cockpit interior is also kind of basic. But from a distance, it's not too bad looking with some paint on it. Although I'm noticing this engine is... Yeah, it's propelling the engine is a little off. Not that I like to show you all my dark secrets, but if you look head on, you'll notice that's a little bit off. So something happened there. <laughs> Also, if you look carefully, the wheel wells really aren't deep enough to actually handle the landing gear if they were to retract. So, those are some of the dirty secrets of the kit. But from a distance, I think it looks pretty good. And if it's, you know, in a showcase, it looks nice. And this paint job, I think, is pretty cool. And I'll explain more about that in a second. So, let's talk about the the Nakajima Shoki. And I'm going off of this book that's been in the collection for quite a while. Japanese and Italian aircraft. So the Nakajima Ki-44 Shoki, the Tojo, let's see the armament on this, depending on the versions, the Type 1 is a Type 1B, a 2A, and a 2B. But generally it has, you know, two 12.7 machine guns in the wings and two 7.7 .7 machine guns in the fuselage. And later on they began to have, you know, racks for bombs. And some had two 40 millimeter low velocity cannon in it. Wow. And some had 20 millimeter cannon in the wings. So it all depended. So this plane was, let's see, first prototypes were built in August 1940. Production of the first type was in May 1942, and then 1943, and then just the 2B was December 1944. So this one, this plane was not as maneuverable as previous Japanese fighters, which is, you know, kind of the trademark of the Japanese fighter planes as this maneuverability but in this case it was 
speed and climb is what they wanted and they wanted it to you know land quickly so this was uh, blah, 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 blah. let me see what else have we got here took a while to get this plane going um, as far as production because like I said it mentions in some prototypes but this thing probably didn't enter uh, service until until later so the shoki it, it means demon in J Japanese and they were effective against allied bombers so that's what the speed and the, you know the climb was to get them up into the air to be able to intercept the B-29s that's pretty much what this plane was really designed to do so that's what's claimed to fame was as an interceptor of allied bombers and this particular example here this is a really great series if you're really into Japanese aircraft there's a good number to, to this series because uh, it gets really in depth into the whole range of army and navy every type of aircraft imaginable um, but to be fair you know this book talks about the engines and the history and the technical aspects but this book is really about squadrons and markings and painting options so if you're a model builder like me this is fantastic but if you want history of airplanes themselves this doesn't really cover that so much but it's talking about its use in different squadrons you know and the paint and markings what's good about this is that it tends to decipher some of these squadron markings that can be complicated to understand um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to give you an example of that here but but anyway so this one yeah this is taken from this here as you can see it's based on this aircraft here which I was immediately drawn to the color scheme I really like that camouflage uh, a lot of these were in overall silver um, but this one I haven't seen a camouflage like that before in a Japanese fighter so I just had to do it you know and so this is the commander of the uh, Hikodai sec the second Shutai if I'm saying this right of the Hikodai 85th Sentai I'm not <laughs> good at Japanese so hopefully I'm not murdering the pronunciation so this was used in Canton, China in the summer of 1944. So that's what that is. And there she is here. So one of the big advantages to getting an Ari or Otaki kit is that the price tag is really low. <laughs> Because Hazagawa and Tamiya, well, Tamiya can be reasonable, you know, but some of the Hazagawa, they get they can get pricey, and you can get these in some hobby shops or online, you can get these as low as eight dollars plus shipping. But I mean, I haven't searched for one recently, but that's what I paid for this. It was like eight bucks. So if you can get a plane of that quality at that low a price. It's to me, I didn't mind sacrificing some of the detail for the fact that I could have this in my collection with this cool paint scheme, and it cost me under under ten bucks, really. So that's the advantage to an Otaki kit. So let me give you a quick de uh, demonstration here. So this is, and this is still around under the under the, like I said, the Ari name. So this is the Oscar. And there are some pros and cons to these kits, as I mentioned. So take it or leave it, this is what an instruction sheet looks like, if I can get this to let go. Pretty rudimentary instruction sheet. So this is the Oscar, I don't know if you can see that. It's weird that it starts with the wing assembly first. I haven't seen that. Thing. And you 
get into the interior, the engine. So there's really not much to these. So they're pretty, they're pretty simple. I found these overall to be kid friendly. Uh, I did run into a problem with one where when I put the pilot in and then I went to put the canopy on, there was no way that canopy glass is going to fit. Uh, that was really frustrating. So I literally had to do a lot of surgery to the pilot's head and everything to get the canopy on. So oof, test fitting and checking all these parts out way, way in advance helps. Uh, the painting, you know, it's not a whole lot of detail. I mean, uh, not detail, but uh, details of it as far as, you know, what these decals stand for. The decals are pretty good, by the way, but they don't tell you what they are. You have to get a book or, or try to source this information because there's no real breakdown. I don't know if the Japanese uh, text tells you anything else because it shows you the two marking options here on the side. Actually, let's look at that. Okay. So you see the marking options on the side. Here's the decal sheet. I don't see a double zero for that plane, do you? I see a number 45, which I guess you're going to make for the same squadron. Um, yeah. Not everything is actually there. And then there's another squadron emblem. Or third option, apparently, that's unexplained. So you're going to need to do some digging to get an idea of what some of these are. Yeah, because you can't do... Double zero isn't there. <laughs> and that's on the box top, too. Look how cool that is, but we don't give you the markings for that one. Uh -huh. So you have uh, the 45 with a red stripe. It's not even the same squadron, so... Anyhow... If you can deal with that, the, you know, surprise, <laughs> then you're all set, right? But a little bit more here, I'll show you in just a second. So the moldings, I don't know, you be the judge. Keep in mind the price is really low. So... See the pilot there. I'll try to get to you. Uh, where is he? Try to trace him. It's right there. So, eh, <laughs> not the best detail. Engine cylinders and all that, or. bag never opens the way you hope it's going to. Alright, so the engine pieces, you know, those cylinders could be better, right? There's the pilot. Oops. Sam. So, you got to take the good with the bad with these. The canopy is just one piece. It's a little difficult to try to mask and paint those things. They don't have the best um, indentations or whatever for the glass. So if you can translate Japanese, that might say what squadrons those are. But again, you don't have the, the decal option to do the first one anyway. So it doesn't really make a difference. And I'm sure we could probably find those squadrons I'm sure they're in here somewhere. You could probably find them in here if you wanted to. I'll take a very quick look because I don't want to keep you guys tied down for very long. Oh, yeah. Is that that one? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, I'm not coming up with it. Oh, no, here it is. 
red stripe with a number could be it's probably this squadron here probably that one and I'm guessing off the top of my head that could be wrong that this bottom one I'm thinking that might be a fighter school it's got the home band here home defense maybe the school I don't know anyhow so that's what we've got today I hope you enjoyed that and uh, keep on modeling and we'll talk to you guys real soon bye now